Event calendar plugins for WordPress are often bloated and overcomplicated for the vast majority of use cases. So that's why I teamed up with Elijah Mills to build a fresh take on calendar plugins. What we built is a product called PyCalendar, and that enables you to turn any post on your site into an event that displays on a front end calendar in just a matter of minutes. So today what I'm going to do is show you how it works and what you can do with it. The free version of the plugin is available right now in the WordPress repository. So you can take a look at that by going to plugins, add new, and then if you search PyCalendar, then you'll find it right away. With that installed, you can now turn any post across your entire site into an event. This works for any post in any post type, even WordPress defaults like posts and pages. So what you're going to want to do is edit the post and you'll see a new sidebar option when you're utilizing Gutenberg called Calendar. Click on that and enable the show on calendar toggle, give your post a start date and a time, and then optionally an end date and time, and then publish it. Go anywhere on your site and add the PyCal shortcode, publish it and view it on the front end, and now you can see you have a fully functional front end calendar with your post event on it. How easy is that? I mentioned this works with any post type, so even if you have a CPT, like let's say classes for a yoga studio, that will work, or for any type of post for any organization, this is going to work. Adding your custom post type to the calendar works exactly as we've already seen. You'll simply just enable the show on calendar, set your date and time, publish, and now you can see your front end calendar is showing both the post and your custom post type together. You also have the ability to let your event span multiple days on your calendar simply by just choosing an end date, let's say three days later than your start date, and the calendar will plot that on the front end for you automatically. As you've probably already noticed, there's a drop down here with the calendar that includes a few different view options. So that way you can see your events in a list or calendar view, a week view, and that sort of thing. The PyCal shortcode also has a few options to enable you to set the default view when the calendar loads, or to even show only one post type. You can learn more about all the shortcode options by clicking the link in the description of this video. When it comes to the styling of your calendar, we've built it so that it inherits as much of your theme styles as possible. So things like your heading and fonts, your colors, and all those sorts of things are going to be inherited automatically. As you can see in this example, my heading here for the month name has automatically inherited the heading that I have set in my Generate Press settings. If you go into Generate Press and change your fonts or your colors, you can see that the calendar is updating based on those selections that I've made inside of my theme. This inheritance is also happening inside the popover, but with that said, you're probably going to want to configure this to be more suitable for your website and your specific branding. So there are numerous different CSS classes you can take advantage of simply by inspecting the elements and you'll find that pretty much anything you need to style, there's a very simple CSS class to do so. For instance, inside the popover, if you want to adjust the styling of the title, you can see that there's a really simple class called pycal popover underscore underscore title. Want to customize the appearance of the popover card itself? Just use this class right here. So just like everything in PyCalendar, we've built it to be as flexible as possible, not get in your way and not add any extra bloat. The free version has been available for a few months now, so a number of feature requests have boiled to the top, number one of which has been recurring events, and we're proud to have that implemented and available right now in our pro version. Like everything in PyCalendar, we didn't sacrifice any flexibility with our implementation of recurring events, and it's really easy to get it working. If you take a look here, I have the pro version installed and there's a few new options. You can see this event recurrence and color section, and so we can enable this event repeats. Then we'll choose the interval and the frequency, if we wanted an event to repeat every three days, we simply enter three in the interval and days as the frequency. Or if you want every six weeks, just enter six and weeks, and the event will repeat automatically for you. You can also define an event to repeat on the exact same position in a month. So if you choose an interval of once a month and you want it to repeat every Saturday, like maybe for a farmer's market post, you can toggle the option here that says exact weekday and position. And what that will do for you is make it so the event always shows up on the first Saturday, as opposed to the third or the 10th or whatever day that happens to be in the month. The pro version also supports turning WooCommerce products or even easy digital downloads into events on your calendar. This opens up the possibility for you to create event ticketing and registration systems that are completely independent of any kind of event plugin. So that gives you the ultimate flexibility. Whether you're using the free or the pro version, we're already seeing a bunch of great use cases for PyCalendar for things like golf course events, council meetings, private dashboards, and already so much more. 
So with all of that said, I'm really proud of what we've come up with, and I can't wait to get your feedback on it. I've left a link to both the free and the pro version in this video description, so I would really love for you to check it out, and if you feel that it warrants it, please do consider leaving us a review on the plugin repo. We're really trying to grow that ranking, so when you search calendar, we're one of the first options that pops up. With that, I really hope you enjoy PyCalendar, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another video.